السلام علیکم رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ایوری ون الحمد للہ رب العالمین میں اللہ مرسی بی اپون ایوری ون میں الرحمٰن الرحیم بلس ایوری ون ڈیورنگ دیز ویری ویری اسپیشل پریشس بلیسڈ ڈیز آمین نحمت ہو و نسلی اللہ رسول الکریم اما بعد فاؤد بلّہ من شیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ آل پریز از ڈیو ٹو اللہ We praise Him and we seek His help and forgiveness. We seek refuge in Allah from our soul's evils and our wrongdoings. He whom Allah guides, no one can misguide. And he whom He misguides, no one can guide. I bear witness that there is no God except Allah, alone, without any partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad wasallam is His servant and messenger. رب شرح لی سودری و یسر لی عمری واہ لقدت ملسانی یف کہو کاؤلی الحمد للہ رب العالمین او مائی لارڈ اوپن فار می مائی چیسٹ این ایز مائی ٹاس فار می این لوس ان دا ناٹ دا ڈیفیکٹ فرام مائی ٹنگ سو دیٹ دے می انڈرسٹینڈ مائی اسپیچ سورہ توحا سورہ نمبر ٹوینٹی آیات ٹوینٹی فائیو ٹو ٹوینٹی ایٹ الحمد للہ رب العالمین ایز وی نو وی آر ان دا لاسٹ ٹین ڈیز آف رمادان بائی اللہ مرسی ہی از سپریملی کائنڈ دیٹ ہی گیو اس دس منتھ اینڈ ہی از سپریملی کائنڈ دیٹ ہی گیو اس لائف این اپرچونیٹی ٹو ایس فار فرگیونس این اپرچونیٹی ٹو ڈو گڈ این اپرچونیٹی ٹو پریز اللہ این اپرچونیٹی ٹو تھینک اللہ این اپرچونیٹی ٹو ہیلپ اور دس الحمد للہ ان شاء اللہ آمین اینڈ وی نو دیٹ دیز این امیزنگ نائٹ ڈیورنگ دیز ٹین ڈیز اینڈ اٹ از مینشنڈ الحمد للہ ان سورہ قدر سورہ نمبر نائنٹی سیون نائٹ نون از لہلت القدر دا نائٹ آف ڈکری نائنٹی سیونتھ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, English translation is, Indeed, we revealed the Qur'an during the night of decree. And what can make you know what is the night of decree? The night of decree is better than a thousand months. The angels and the spirit descend therein by permission of their Lord for every matter. Peace it is until the emergence of dawn. Ayat 1 to 5. الحمد للہ رب العالمین این سورہ البقرہ لیٹس اس نو اللہ سبحان و تعالیٰ لیٹس اس نو ان سورہ البقرہ آیت نمبر ون ایٹی فائیو دیٹ دیٹ قرآن مجید واز ریویلڈ ان دا منتھ آف رمادان دا منتھ آف رمادان از دیٹ ان وچ واز ریویلڈ دا قرآن اے گائیڈنس فار دا پیپل اینڈ کلیئر پروفس آف گائیڈنس اینڈ کرائیٹیرین سو الحمد للہ رب العالمین دس لالۃ القدر کمز ان دا منتھ آف رمادان دس اسپیشل اسپیشل نائٹ اینڈ اٹ از بیٹر دین اے تھاؤزینڈ منتھس دیٹ از دی ویلیو آف دس نائٹ اینڈ دیٹ از وائی وی ڈونٹ وانٹ ٹو ایور مس اٹ لیٹس لوک ایٹ سورہ دخان سورہ نمبر فورٹی فور آیت نمبر تھری ان ڈیڈ وی سینٹ اٹ ڈاؤن ڈیورنگ اے بلیسڈ نائٹ ان ڈیڈ وی وار ٹو وان مین کائنڈ سورہ دخان سورہ نمبر فورٹی فور آیت نمبر تھری دا کمپینین انس ابن ملک ریپورٹڈ رمادان اپروچڈ سو دا میسنجر آف اللہ سبحان و تعالیٰ سیڈ دا منتھ ہیز کم ٹو یو اینڈ ان اٹ دیر از اے نائٹ دیر از بیٹر دین اے تھاؤزینڈ منتھس ہو ایور از ڈپرائوڈ آف اٹ از ڈپرائوڈ آف آل گڈنس اینڈ نو ون از ڈپرائوڈ آف اٹس گڈنس ایکسیپٹ ون ہو از ٹرولی ڈپرائوڈ میں لا ناٹ میک دیٹ ہیپن دس از ریکارڈیڈ ان سنن ابن ماجہ حدیث نمبر ون سکس فور فور سو لیٹس ٹاک لٹل بیٹ اباؤٹ لالت القدر دا پریسائز نائٹ آن وچ لالت القدر اکرز ہیز ناٹ بین مینشنڈ دا پروفٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم سیڈ سرچ فار لالت القدر ان دا آڈ نائٹس آف دا لاسٹ ٹین نائٹس آف رمادان دس از ریپورٹیڈ ان صحیح بخاری پروفٹ محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم سیڈ ہو ایور اسٹینڈس ان پریئر ڈیورنگ لالت القدر ود فیتھ اینڈ ہوپ ان The reward of Allah, all his previous sins will be forgiven. This is recorded in Sahih Bukhari, uh, uh, hadith number 1901. So, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, 
there is a special link between this night and seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aisha Razila ta'ala anha asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if I knew which night is Lalatul Qadr, what should I say during it? Rasul Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam instructed her to say, O oh Allah, you are most forgiving and you love to forgive, so forgive me. Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbul afwa fa'afu anni. O oh Allah, you are forgiving and love forgiveness, so forgive me. Recorded in Sunan Ibn Majah 3850. There's always a wisdom in what happens and why it happens. So there is a wisdom behind not knowing exactly when it occurs. It could be any of the odd nights, as Rasul Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa told us, which uh, scholars have pointed out um, as Ibn Qudama al-Maqdisi um, writes, God has concealed this night from the Ummah so that they may strive in seeking it and performing worship throughout the month in the hopes of catching it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concealed this night for the Ummah so that we struggle and strive and work harder and earn more reward. Allah Akbar. Similarly, He concealed the hour of the special acceptance time on Friday. We also don't know the exact time, the acceptance time on Friday, so that one would increase in their supplications throughout the day. And He concealed His greatest name, Ithni Adam, among His divine names and his pleasure with acts of obedience so that people would strive for them. And he concealed an individual's lifespan and the hour of the day of judgment so that humanity would continuously strive in good deeds and not be heedless. Recorded in Darul Alam Al-Qutub, Volume 4, page 453. So we see here that in Surah 97, Ayat number 1, uh, Surah Qadr and Surah Dukhan 44, Ayat 3. It is mentioned that the Quran was revealed on this night. Ibn Abbas has explained this by mentioning on Lalatul Qadr that the Quran was revealed in its entirety from the highest heaven to the lowest heaven and placed in a special chamber called Baitul Izza, the house of honor. From there, it was revealed gradually over the course of 23 years to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ibn Taymiyyah explains that this revelation from a written form in Lohe Mafud to a written form in Batul Izza does not negate the angel Jibreel alayhi salam hearing the Quran directly from Allah and bringing it to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam this is recorded in Majmu Al Fatawa 12, uh, 1 to 6 and 7. Uh, thus, we have the oral revelation of the Quran, which took uh, 23 years, Alhamdulillah, mentioned by other scholars, such as Imam Al Shabi, that the revelation of the Quran to the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, began in the month of Ramadan on Lalatul Qadr when Jibreel Islam first descended to visit Prophet Muhammad. This is recorded in Mana Al Qatan Mabahith fi Ulumul Quran, page 97. He explains that both of these opinions are, in fact, correct and compatible. As we are told by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the night of Qadr, the night of decree, is better than a thousand months, so worshipping Allah in that night is better than worshipping Him a thousand months, which actually equals to 83 years and four months. So we should truly, truly try to pray, try to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during these last 10 days, even more so, so that we can earn this reward. Lalatul Qadr is the night during which the fates, destinies and decrees are sent down for the forthcoming year. The famous Quranic commentator Abul Athana al Alusi notes in his tafsir that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says on that night every Hakim decree is specified, one of the meanings of Hakim is muhakkam, which means decisive. Let's go back to Surah Dukhan. 
Hamim by the clear book. Verily, we revealed the Quran during the blessed night. Indeed, we have always forewarned mankind. On that night, every wise decree, Amar Hakim, is specified by our command. Surely, we have always been sending messengers as a mercy from your Lord. Indeed, he is all hearing, all knowing. Ayats 1 to 6 of Surah Dukhan. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, a very precious night is Lalatul Qadr and we're looking at the importance of it. Alhamdulillah, the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Qur'an, what can be more blessed? Ar-Rahman, Allam al-Qur'an. Qur'an, guidance for humanity. Alhamdulillah, Qur'an is Furqan. It lets us know all that is right, all that is wrong. What is halal? What is haram? How to lead our lives in the best ways possible so that we can be successful, inshallah, in this life and the next. Ameen. Surah Alaq, first five ayats were revealed um, during this blessed night. And it begins with the command to read the Quran and ends with the command to prostrate and draw close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our Rabb. In that is divine prescription, divine guidance for how the night should be spent. A Shafi, Rahmatullah, said that some of the pious predecessors preferred to spend the night in prayer, some in Quran, some in Dua, and all are rewarded by Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq, the beautiful opportunity to experience this blessed night in the most wonderful way approaching allah connecting with allah in the most wonderful way praising allah thanking allah inshallah ta'ala worshiping him and asking him for help asking for forgiveness inshallah alhamdulillah rabbil alameen we begin juice 20 today by allah's mercy 20th juice of the Quran contains Surah An Naml, the ants, from Ayat 56 to 93. It completes here. And then we have Surah Al Qasas, the narration, and in its entirety, and Surah An Kabut, the spider, up to Ayat 45. And so, Surah An Naml, Surah Al Qasas, and Surah Al An Kabut are all Makkan surahs. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Surah Namal continues in this juice with the story of Prophet Lut Islam, and how all his family was saved from the destruction of the raining stones except his wife who was destined to be those who remained behind. Allah draws the attention to the disbelievers of the fact that he created the heavens and the earth and sends down rain from the sky, makes the wind blow, causes the trees to grow and answers the call of the one who is in distress. We're going to look at that ayat while their other gods have done nothing. Um, we are reminded again of the Day of Judgment and what will be the end of those who deny Allah's signs. Let's look at ayat number 62 of Surah an naml Surah number 27. Ayat 62. Who is it that answers the distressed when they call upon him? Who removes their suffering? Who makes you successors in the earth? Is it another God beside Allah? Little do they reflect. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking questions and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing wonderment, that bewilderment as to the fact why the humanity majority does not want to follow Allah's commandments, does not want to understand the guidance, does not want to reach out to Allah, but reaches out to others. Who is it that answers the distressed when they call on him? So when one is distressed, that is the time that one has tried each and every avenue for, to find answers. And then totally, when one gets totally distressed, one really absolutely calls out for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So why not do it right in the beginning? Right now, when one is going through problems, one should just reach out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Truly, He is the only one that can make things better. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Who is it that answers the distressed when they call upon Him? Who removes their suffering? Who makes you successors in the earth? Is it 
another god beside allah little do they reflect what we need to say allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you are the one that answers the question the answers and gives solution to the distressed one to the one who has totally uh, lost hope who and then only turns to you and then allah says who removes the suffering and we should say allah you remove the suffering alhamdulillah please remove my suffering and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says isn't it i who goes you know from one generation to another generation and continues to bring more and more people as successors then multiplies humanity who is it who makes the successors on the earth and also of course uh who is the one that gives any power to anyone and takes away can so alhamdulillah generation after generation allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is continuing humanity for as long as he would like it to continue and then allah says is it another god beside allah is there anyone else that can do all this take away the distress remove the suffering bring new generations forward is there any other god that can do that why don't you reflect why don't you think why don't you ponder why don't you understand allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to understand this very very important concept which is that truly we need to reach out to allah only iya kana abudu wa iya kana stain truly we only worship you and we only want your help we only seek your help allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you are the one who is the king of and the majestic ruler of the entire universe we need to believe that we need to bring our thought process to only that that oh, there is only one allah there is only one god there is only one creator and the only one sustainer and the only one that can take away our suffering inshallah taala amen in uh, previously we had covered the fact that uh, that human beings when they have ease when they have plenty they do not turn to allah that much and when they are in distress when they are totally in a lot of hardship then they go back to their fitrat which is the acknowledgement of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what we need to do in our lives is that we need to be connected to him during ease and during difficulties so that we can get the most support and understanding and forgiveness from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah amen let's look at the next ayat ayat number 87 in this session and warn of the day the horn will be blown and whoever is in the heavens and whoever is on the earth will be terrified except whom allah wills and all will come to him humbled let's look at ayat number 88 right next to it and you see the mountains thinking them motionless while they will pass as the passing of the clouds it is the work of allah who perfected all things indeed he is aware of what of that which you do that's um now ayat number 88 we'll read another translation and you see the mountains and imagine them fixed yet they pass as the passing of the clouds the making of god who has perfected everything he is fully informed of what you do so we are seeing this time allah is mentioning this time where the trumpet is going to be blown and this is the end of the world the end of our existence here on this planet and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says even the mountains are going to turn into like clouds we think that the mountains are very firm they are fixed and Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala says no they will be just like passing of the clouds and Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala lets us know that everything that he does is perfected is in perfection let's look at 89 whoever brings good he shall have better than it and they shall be secure from the terror on the day we have been uh, understanding that there's going to be terror on the day of judgment there's going to be a lot of very scary events going on and um even allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let's look at 87 again um allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and all will come to him humbled before that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that 
let's read from the beginning and warn of the day that the horn will be blown and whoever is in the heavens and whoever is on the earth will be terrified except whom Allah wills and the commentators the scholars say that whom Allah wills are the martyrs then um as we went on to 88 ayat 88 we saw that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is is uh, talking about how the world is going to change how the mountains is uh, mountains are going to turn into clouds then in 89 we saw that whoever brings good and this is where we need to be concentrating here whoever brings good Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give better than it he shall have better than it Allah will give better than that whatever good we do Allah always repays us in much more than we deserve and they shall be secure from the from terror on that day so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says not only the fact that the scholars let us know that in ayat 87 that the the ones that are going to not experience this terror are going to be the martyrs but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also going to take care of the people whose good deeds whose belief in Allah was pure oneness of Allah was clear and that that person was bringing good deeds, that person is also going to be secure of the terror of that day. That day is going to be very fearful. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect his beloved people who worked hard in this world and who struggled and they wanted to do their best to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to, do, to be such people that um, follow the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, rules and regulations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the boundaries of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked us to be good in this world, to stop wrong and, and propagate good, that we were doing all this. And if we were doing all this, inshallah ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says they shall be secure from the terror on that day. May Allah make that happen for all of us. May we strive and struggle during our lifetime so that we do not experience this terror of this day. The trumpet that will be blown will be of very extraordinary sound. And uh, all living creatures will be very, very scared. And um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that this sound... Uh, will become will make everybody senseless then the trumpet is blown a second time bringing them all back to life it is then blown again to gather them all together all shall come to him in utter humility we just saw in uh, verse 87 so all things in this world as we know it will change even the you know the firm mountains as was described uh, I, it's like, you know, the mountains will lose their strength, Allah Akbar. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, you know, he is perfect in everything he does and there's wisdom behind everything he does and nothing happens by chance or coincidence. Nothing is flawed, nothing is overlooked or forgotten. What we need to do in this world as we are given life is that we need to be such people that Allah loves and we love him most and we want to please it most so that this fearful day will be such that we will be okay with the fact that we tried we tried our best may Allah make us of those who continue to struggle and strive and try to be the best that we can be the way Allah wants us to be inshallah I mean inshallah we'll go on to the next surah Surah Al-Qasas, the narration, inshallah. Surah number 28. It contains 88 ayat. Surah Al-Qasas was revealed just after Surah An-Namal. The story of Musa al-Islam, peace be upon him, is returned to again. This time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala highlights how Allah in his infinite wisdom destined that he would be, Musa al-Islam would be raised in the house of Pharaoh and that how he will be brought back to his mother for nursing Allah Akbar. And uh, so many beautiful aspects are in this surah. We are going to look at the first ayat from this surah, inshallah, in this session. Surah 28, ayat number 7. And we inspired to the mother of Moses, Musa al-Islam, suckle him, but when you fear for him, 
cast him into the river and do not fear and do not grieve. Indeed, we will return him to you and will make him one of the messengers. Allahu Akbar. A very fearful time it was for the Bani Israel because the Pharaoh had had a dream that one of the Bani Israel boys will grow up to take over his kingdom, his ruling. And so the Pharaoh decided, the Pharaoh decided that all the boys born at that time would be uh, of the Bani Israel would be killed. And so this was the year of the the time when the boys were supposed to be killed. And so what happened was that Musa al-Islam was born that year. And Musa al-Islam's beautiful mother was inspired by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to put the baby Musa al-Islam in a basket and cast him off in the river this river, uh, Nile, and so naturally a mother wants to keep her baby, she wants to love the baby, she wants to nurse the baby, and but there's this fear that the baby could be killed and there's this inspiration, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is letting them know that she needs to put the baby in a basket and let him go. And we inspired to the mother of Moses, suckle him, but when you fear for him, cast him into the river and do not fear and do not grieve. Indeed, we will return him to you and will make him one of the messengers. But how much Allah is consoling her. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is consoling Musa al-Islam's mother and saying, I don't fear and don't grieve and I will, will return the baby back to you. And so she relied on Allah. She trusted Allah. She knew that Allah's word is always true. And this beautiful person, this mother of Musa al Islam, put the baby in the basket and let the basket go. Allahu Akbar. And as we see in ayat number eight, and the family of Pharaoh picked him up out of the river so that he would become to them an enemy and cause of grief. Indeed, Pharaoh and Haman and their soldiers were deliberate sinners. The Pharaoh, Haman, and their hosts, they were chasing down every newborn male in Musa salam's community because of fear of their own positions. Their spies were everywhere so that no newly born boy could escape their watchful eyes. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of planners. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does things in such a amazing way, alhamdulillah. He puts into their own midst a child. It is indeed the child who will bring about their downfall. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so in time he would become an enemy to them, a source of grief. He will certainly be an open foe, challenging them and bringing grief and sorrow. The Pharaoh Haman and their hosts were sinners indeed. Let's look at ayat number nine. And the wife of Pharaoh said, he will be a comfort to the eye for me and for you. Do not kill him. Perhaps he may benefit us or we may adopt him as a son. And they perceived not. Let's look at ayat number 10. And the heart of Moses' mother became empty of all else. She was about to disclose the matter concerning him. Had we not bound fast her heart that she would be of the believers. So of course a mother's heart was sinking. She was fearful. She didn't know what was going to happen. And she almost disclosed the matter that she's the mother, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave her strength. We you know, so here we see, and the heart of Moses' mother became empty of all else. She was about to disclose the matter concerning him. Had we not bound fast her heart, that she would be of the believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala secured her heart, gave her an understanding, made her strong. Allah wa akbar. Ayat number 11. And she said to his sister, now the mother is speaking to her daughter, follow him. 
follow Musa Alayhislam's little basket. So she watched him from a distance while they perceived not. She was watching. Now, Alhamdulillah, let's look at ayat number 12. And we had prevented from him all wet nurses before. So she said, shall I direct you to a household that will be responsible for him? for you while they are to him for his upbringing sincere. Ayat number 13. So we restored him to his mother that she might be content and not grieve and that she would know that the promise of Allah is true, but most of the people do not know. As we are reflecting on these ayat, we are seeing that how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of planners how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects his loved ones, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses in the most intricate ways of handling the situation. Truly he is al Latif. And we see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing this beautiful relationship of a family unit the family unit is the foundation of a society, Allah Akbar, and how closely they are taking care of each other and how closely they want to help each other. Musa al-Islam's mom and his sister, both amazingly beautiful human beings, caring for the little child and how the mother is instructing, training, giving good guidance to the sister and letting her go after the brother. And why would she not want to go? A, a relationship between a sister and a brother is very, very precious. It is very strong. A sister is always caring, always giving, always wanting to do the best for her siblings. This is the beautiful bond that Allah gives in a family unit. Alhamdulillah, this is the love that Allah puts between siblings. And so the sister goes after the brother, Allah Akbar, and they over there, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has planned it such that Musa alayhi salam, the little baby, does not want to take the milk of any wet nurse. He doesn't want to be nursed by anyone. And he's crying, the baby's crying. And here, uh, Musa alayhi salam's sister is watching the whole scene and she says i will direct you to a family that will take care of him and will nurse him let's try it out and so she takes um musa al-islam back to his mother nobody knows that that's musa al-islam's mother nobody knows that that's musa al-islam's sister allah wakbar how allah subhanahu wa ta'ala conceals everything how allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects this family allah wakbar and so Musa al-Islam is returned back to his mother for nursing. And it's such a beautiful story, Allah Akbar, how of family love, the family unit, and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us understand that all these relationships are very precious because these relationships are such which make us care for each other, Allah Akbar. Truly, Allah is supreme. He's Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. As we go on forward, we will look at ayat number 16. In ayat number 16, we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, English translation is, He said, My Lord, indeed I have wronged myself, so forgive me. And he forgave him, indeed. He's forgiving and merciful. This is the time, this is the glimpse from the life of Musa alayhi salam where by mistake, he killed a person because he didn't realize his strength and because it, there was an argument going on and it was a total mistake. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala immediately forgave him, forgave Musa alayhi salam. He understood that absolutely he knew this was a total mistake. In Tafsir Asanul Bayan, it says, Prophets of God are protected by Allah. They do not sin. This murder was also not a major sin because it was unintentional. In spite of that, Musa al-Islam asked for Allah's forgiveness. He said, my Lord, indeed, I have wronged myself, so forgive me. And he forgave him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave him. Indeed, he's 
the forgiving, the merciful. And so we are immediately turning back to Allah, immediately saying a dua, immediately asking for repentance, and Allah is Ghafurur Rahim, Allah Akbar. Let's go on and uh, to ayat number 22 of Surah Al Qasas. I trust my Lord will guide me to the right way. This is Musa alayhi salam's belief in Allah, reliance on Allah, knowing that Allah will not leave him alone, knowing that Allah will guide him. This is when Musa alayhi salam was going towards Midian. And when he went towards the land of Midian, he said, it may be that my Lord guides me to the right way. Allah answered his prayers and led him to reach the place which proved to be good for him, both materially and spiritually. Allahu Akbar. We'll look at ayat number 24. So he watered their flock for them. Then he went back to the shade and said, My Lord, indeed I am for whatever good you would send down to me in need. We'll look at a few translations here. Uh, my Lord, I'm in need of whatever good you send down to me. My Lord, I'm ever needful for of any favor that you may send my way. Rabbi inni lima anzalta ilayya min khairin faqeer. A, a dua that we should memorize and uh, say many, many times during this, these days, especially always asking for Allah's mercy, and truly Allah is Al Ghani, and we are very needful. We are fakir. We are um, absolutely in debt to Allah for anything good that He gives us. And this is a dua from Musa alayhi salam, where he really doesn't have anything at this point. He's run away from Egypt. He's come to Midian. He is. Now he doesn't have any belongings, he doesn't have any relatives, he doesn't have any friends, he doesn't know the place, it's absolutely a new place for him. And he's saying, anything good Allah you send me, I am in need of, I'm in need of anything good you send me. And truly, as we go through our, our lives, we need to say this because truly at every moment in time, we are in need of Allah's goodness, Allah's blessings, Allah's favor. It is a beautiful du'a. Rabbi inni liman zalta ilayya min khairin faqeer. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us that, such that we remember this du'a again and again and again, inshallah, ameen, and recite it with our hearts and soul, inshallah ta'ala. And so we see that uh, when Musa alayhi salam reached Midian, uh, he saw the watering place, a lot of people were watering their cattle. Midian was originally the name of the tribe who were the descendants of Ibrahim Islam. Musa Islam, being a descendant of Yaqub Islam and the son of Ishaq, the son of Ibrahim, was related to the people of Midian. This is from Esar At-Tafasir. Midian was a, also a dwelling place for Prophet Shuaib Islam as well as the place to which Allah had sent him as his messenger. So um, Musa Islam helped these two women who were trying to give water to their cattle, their goats. And uh, so um, he helped them. And then he said this dua after helping. As we reflect on these ayat, we see how again and again, all the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how they turn to Allah again and again in the most beautiful du'as are recorded in the Quran of our beautiful prophets. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, how, how fortunate are we that we read these, these du'as that were said so many years ago and they are preserved and they are guarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this Quran Majid, how we can say the same exact words, Allah Akbar, that these prophets said. Musa alayhi salam's dua is truly very, very beautiful here. We will look a little bit on the fact that how important duas are these supplications, these invocations to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
especially these days, these nights, these precious nights. Alhamdulillah, dua is the core of worship. This is a hadith, alhamdulillah. And uh, dua is the weapon of the believer, as we know, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa told us this. So let's look at a few etiquettes, how to get dua answered, dua etiquettes. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam heard someone supplicating after his prayer without praising Allah and without supplicating Allah for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. With regard to him, Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, This man rushed. Then he called him and said, When any one of you has performed salah and wants to supplicate, let him praise Allah first, then glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the beginning, and then he should supplicate Allah for me. Then he may supplicate for whatever he likes. So first, what we should do, we have to praise Allah. Alhamdulillah, we need to praise Allah before we say a dua. Then we have to send blessings to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sending salawat upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then we make our dua. So, alhamdulillah, um, and after making dua, we say ameen, inshallah ta'ala, and then say the durood again, blessings to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam again. Let's look at a hadith, Sahih Muslim 2695. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, glory is to Allah and praise is to Allah and there is none worthy of worship but Allah and Allah is the greatest. This dhikr is dearer to me than all the sun rises upon the whole world. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa has said this. So this is a beautiful way to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's look at another hadith. Umar bin Khattab narrated, Indeed, the supplication stops between the heavens and the earth. Nothing of it is raised up until you send Salat upon your Prophet. Jamia Tirmizi 486. We should never underestimate the power of the Dua, the Messenger of Allah. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, Allah is most generous and he dislikes to turn away empty uh, hands of his slaves when he raises them to him we must understand how duas are answered if we make a dua our invocation our supplication to allah can be answered just the way we asked for example if we ask something and allah gives exactly what we asked that's one way allah answers the prayers the other one is that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his knowledge would give us something even better than what we asked then the other thing that happens is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because we reached out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because we confided in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because we asked for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help in his wisdom, maybe he doesn't think we should get it, but he will uh, remove any looming misfortune or difficulty. He will avert the misfortune. He will avert it. This is recorded in Musnad Ahmad. So, as we know, nothing brings more inner peace than to sit alone with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and remember Him and cry out of His fear, out of, out of love for Him. We must ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in humility. All our invocations should be in humility. And so they become more effective, inshallah. Ameen. Let's look at a few more points. Etiquette of dua. We have to have a sincere intention, and which is that we are only and exclusively asking you, Allah, and we trust you, and to begin with praise and glorification of Allah, like we saw, and send blessings to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and at the end also, and to invoke with certainty that it will be accepted, inshallah ta'ala. Do not ask from anyone other than Allah, invoke for oneself first and then others. Seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while acknowledging one's sins. Acknowledge the blessings of Allah upon oneself and show gratitude. Make dua with full concentration as Allah does not accept a dua which with a heedless heart. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to improve our supplications, our invocations, our duas, our prayers. Ameen. Let's look at the next ayat, ayat number 34 in this session. And my brother Aaron is more fluent than me in tongue, so send him with me as support, verifying me 
Indeed, I fear that they will deny me. Ayat number 35, Allah said, We will strengthen your arm through your brother and grant you both supremacy, so they will not reach you. It will be through our signs. You and those who follow you will be the predominant. As we reflect on these ayat, we see that this is when um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was asking Musa alayhi salam to go to Pharaoh and tell him that there's only one Allah, there's only one God, there's only one Lord, and to let the Bani Israel people go and not to keep them as slaves. And so what does Musa alayhi salam say? He says, ayat number 34, and my brother Aaron, this is Harun alayhi salam, is more fluent than me in tongue. So send him with me as support, verifying me. Indeed, I fear that they will deny me. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we will strengthen your arm through your brother and grant you both supremacy. So they will not reach you. It will be through our signs. You and those who follow you will be the predominant. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala immediately says, absolutely fine. I'll give you your brother as support. Both of you will go as prophets to uh, the Pharaoh, and both of you will give this message of Islam, of monotheism. Alhamdulillah, again we're seeing the family bonds, how the brothers want to be together, how Musa al-Islam wants his brother Harun to be with him. This love between siblings, this love between brothers, this is a family unit. A family unit is very important. To support each other is very important. To care for each other is very important. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala immediately says, of course, you can go with him. That will give you strength, alhamdulillah. And people who follow you, they are the ones that are going to be predominant. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. And as we reflect on these ayat, we see Allah values. Allah values families. Allah values the care that we want, that you know, the care that we have for each other. And Allah values that we give credit to the person who needs to be given credit to, and that we acknowledge each other's talents, that we acknowledge each other's strengths, and that we support each other, and that in times of need, we turn to each other with Allah's mercy and ask for Allah's help, that we all remain united. And uh, it is very important to uh, pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps our families together and that we be good supporters to each other and that we turn to Allah always together and individually and we you know we can learn from each other and teach each other and alhamdulillah care for each other always may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always give us and you know this uh, this opportunity to help each other and you know it is truly truly a big gift from allah to have a brother to have a sister to have a mother to have a father truly we must understand these are very big gifts from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala people who are um, who don't have brothers or sisters or whose parents have gone away or are not in this world anymore that is when you really realize how valuable they were or how you know that if if we don't have them then of course we miss out on this bond but uh, Allah is in his wisdom gives whatever he wants to whoever he wants and we are satisfied with what he has given us but whatever he has given us we should be grateful for inshallah I mean let's go on to next ayat ayat number 70 and he is Allah, there is no deity except him. To him is due all praise in the first life and in the hereafter. And his is the final decision, and to him you will be returned. Throughout the Quran we are seeing, and in this surah also especially, that um, Allah has full control of all the situations. And he is the best of planners. And so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he guides us towards betterment and that he helps us in all our choices and that he makes all of our affairs better 
and with a good result, inshallah, ameen. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, we begin Surah Al-Ankabut, Surah number 29, which means the spider. This Surah was revealed shortly before the migration to Abyssinia, during the middle stage of the Prophet ﷺ's residence at Makkah, at the time when the Muslims had to endure extreme persecution. This Surah contains 69 verses, 69 ayat, and its title is derived from verse 41, which likens the false gods from whom people seek help to the spider's cobweb. And so we go forward. Let's look at ayat number 20 of Surah Ankabut. Say, O Muhammad, travel through the land and observe how he, we began the creation. Then Allah will produce the final creation. Indeed, Allah over all things is competent. Allah Akbar. We are being asked to travel through the land, look at Allah's creation, look at and observe and see the beauty, the intricacy, the variety, the different species and how they are different colors and how they are different shapes. SubhanAllah, travel through the land and observe how he began creation. Then Allah will produce the final creation. Indeed, Allah over all things is competent. Alhamdulillah, exploring, going around, visiting places, traveling, it really opens up our understanding of what the world has and how Allah has created the world. It opens up people's hearts to new ideas, new people, new kinds of environment, new kind of atmosphere, alhamdulillah. It awakens the senses and the minds. Uh, you know, if one lives in the same place all the time, then one doesn't get that big idea of what is around and what other things are there in this world. It is truly a very big gift from Allah to be able to travel around and explore see the nature, see the landmarks, these, see the surroundings, observe how people live. And Alhamdulillah, the beauty that Allah has brought into this world is immense. Truly, it cannot be described. If we look at the seashore, if we look at the, you know, the beautiful sea, the rivers, Alhamdulillah, the different terrain, like smooth land, deserts, uh, forests, you know, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given such an immense beauty to this world. And um, there's so much to learn and so much to appreciate and so much to be grateful for Allah Akbar. And most certainly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has power over all things. He initiates life and brings it back. He's not restricted by what people imagine to be feasible or unfeasible, possible or not possible. Anything is possible with Allah. There's so much to research, so much to explore. It's a, a wonderful, wonderful world. Uh, and what is important is that when we look at the beauty that Allah has surrounded us with, we need to be grateful. If Allah wanted, this world could have been colorless. This world could have been such with a lot of monotony, no variety. It could have been a very different kind of a world if Allah wanted. But Allah is Ar Rahman Ar Rahim. He's Al Khalik, Allah Akbar. He's Kareem, Al Kareem. He is the most giving. He is most generous. And so He has bestowed us with this world. May we live in this world with gratefulness. May we live in this world, not destroying it, but helping to improve it. The environment needs help. The land needs help. We have polluted the, the world so much, air pollution, land pollution, sea pollution. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the understanding that we need to be good caretakers of this beautiful world that Allah has given us. May we contribute and volunteer our time and efforts to cleaning up, inshallah, and preserving it, inshallah, ameen. As we go further, uh, we see about nations that have been destroyed and how they've been destroyed and how they rebelled and how they didn't follow Allah's um, rules and regulations. And we see that uh, 
truly everything belongs to Allah and these are all his forces everything he and anything Allah can use to destroy the rebellious and so we see in surah ankabut as the spider surah number 29 ayat number 40 each we seized by his sin against some we sent a standstorm some were struck by a blast some we caused the ground to cave in beneath them some we drowned it was not god that wronged them but it was they who wronged their own selves with all the gifts that Allah has given us, the biggest gift of guidance, the biggest gift of the Quran Majid, the biggest gift of the messengers that came, the books that came, the fitrat we have, the tarbiyah that Allah gives us, the, the beauty that Allah shows us, the signs all over the universe. If we still are rebellious, if we still are disobedient, if we still are criminals and sinners and all those ugly things, and we see in the past nations how uh, they rebelled and they made fun and mocked and uh, truly were very defiant and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed the nations. May we learn from the past destructions. May we learn to be better. May we learn not to follow those, um, you know, those people who defied Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the messengers. And so... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the power over everything. He's Al-Qadir. He's Al-Qadir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the power to accomplish anything. He's capable of doing anything. And He is the one who brings everything to perfection. And He is the one who decrees all that was, all that is, and all that will ever be. His decree prevails every situation. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to understand that. Ameen. Let's look at the next ayat, ayat number 41, which has the word Ankabut in it, which is the name of the surah, spider. The example of those who take allies other than Allah is like that of a spider who takes a home. And indeed, the weakest of homes is the home of the spider, if they only knew. Another translation, the likeness of those who choose other deity beside Allah is as the likeness of the spider when she takes onto herself a house. And lo, the frailest of all houses is the spider's house, if they but knew. Spider's web is the weakest home. It can even break by a mild breeze. So this verse has described those who worship and place their trust in any other than Allah. They are like the spider's web, which is extremely weak. The trust of those who depend on idols or humans is a weak and fragile trust because it is being compared to the spider's web. There is no um, strength in it because the strength truly lies in Tawheed, in oneness of Allah, and the connection with Allah is the strongest that there can be of a human being, inshallah ta'ala. And when, one, and when humans uh, uh, go to idols um, and uh, pray to them and worship them and go to different human beings also and ask them like they should be asking Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this is a very fragile relationship. It, it, there is no trust, there is no reality in it at all. In Tafsirs by Sayyid Qutb, uh, he says, All power belongs to God. The only protection to be sought is from God. Everything else is weak, flimsy, and powerless. However much it tries to inflict punishment, be tyrannical, and overpowering, they are simply spiders. And, that, and what power has a spider other than the silk with which it weaves the web? Indeed, the spider's home is the frailest of all homes, if they but knew. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to understand that if we reach out to any, you know, any people, and you know how there are these uh, different saints and peers and, and fakirs who think that they can answer the questions and solve our problems, and they can be somebody that we have to, you know, even worship or something this is all a very wrong and frail 
connection. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, reach out to me, the most powerful entity in the entire universe, the creator of all. And if you reach out to any of these idols, any of these fake people who think that they can solve our problems, then we have really gone far away. We have gone far away because truly there, there it's the weakest and the most incorrect way to go forward in life. It is truly a very deviant way and it can be broken just like the just as easily as the cobweb can be broken and can be dismantled or you can say can be uh, finished off by the even the swing of the hand so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to understand that the only entity is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the creator of the universe there is nothing else that is of any strength there is nothing else that is of <clears throat> any value and so we worship only Allah inshallah ta'ala ameen subhanaka allahumma wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaik jazakum allah khairan kaseeran everyone for being here may allah bless everyone Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.